What's up marketers? In today's video, I'm gonna show you the 10 Facebook ads creatives that convert again and again for our clients at Thesis. Seriously, all of these work so well that we almost always try out all 10 of these ad creatives on every single client account that we get. So if you're wondering which ad to make next for your brand or business, you're in the right place. And let's go ahead and dive in. So the first one is actually the easiest one in my opinion to create, which is just simply a press screenshot. Now the reason why I think I see this one working again and again and again is because people actually really do like to click on things that look like press hits. If a really punchy statement is paired with a brand that people already know, like Forbes or People or Vogue, then people inherently trust that statement a lot more. And what's pretty cool is sometimes I see people just doing a straight screenshot of what it looks like on a mobile device and that can work as well. But you can also manipulate this a little bit to extract the best parts of the press hit to make sure that that's also featured. Another thing to note is that these can also be totally faked. This is a really good example from the brand Flow that was actually just being directed to a blog on their website. So in theory, you could write anything on these if you wanted to, but definitely don't pair that with a press outlet that didn't actually say that thing about your brand. That would not be cool. Another reason why I really like this strategy is because it's a really good static option that's not as boring as just a simple image or an image plus headline. There's also many ways to jazz the strategy up. You can put stickers on it to add a little bit of movement. You can even add some gifts in the portion where you're adding a image or a video. Lots of ways to do this one, but I definitely think that all brands should give this one a try, especially if you have good press hits. Next up to no one's surprise is the UGC single testimonial. And I like to call this the problem solution focused ad. And really what you're doing here is you're partnering with a creator to create user generated content for your brand. But in the ad, you're going to be starting off with the problem, introducing your product, and then showing the better life realized from using your product. The structure that I like to use for these type of ad goes like this. Number one, describe the problem in the hook. So that's the first three seconds of the ad. And I try to use I statements here. And then number two, you agitate or elaborate on the problem. Like, why is this problem such a big deal? And then number three, you present the product or the surface as the solution to this problem. And then four, you describe the how-to or process of this product or service. And then you end with a benefits or more testimonials and then a really catchy CTA. The next ad is what I like to call a features point out ad. Now, this ad simply takes a close-up shot of your product and simply points out the features or benefits around the product. I so often often see this become a top performer for a lot of brands and actually has been the ad that we've scaled multiple accounts with. And this is something so simple that you could just create it in Canva. It's really as simple as it gets. Now, number four is something that I've seen working a lot more recently and something that I'm encouraging all of our clients to do now at Thesis, which is the founder story ad. Now, the reason why founder story ads are so successful is because I often think that founders are the best position to communicate the benefits and history of their brand. And oftentimes they have the most personal story to it. And people really do like to pull behind the curtains and see that behind the scenes action of why someone and created a brand in the first place. Something interesting to note here is that I've seen high-end studio production being a really, really good strategy for these founder stories. We've also tried some more lo-fi UGC-like founder story ads, but they just haven't been nearly as successful. But we have been able to turn around several accounts recently using these high-end studio production values type of founders ads, which is pretty cool. So if you're looking for a new type of ad to really invest in, I would highly recommend doing a founder style ad. And if you're interested in working with a team who has a lot of experience in the New York City area, hit me up. We're doing a lot of these shoots recently at Thesis. Now, number five is actually really similar to number two, which is a UGC compilation testimonial. But the way that I like to look at this is it's more like a hook reel. So we wanna take all the best parts from all of our single testimonials that we've already tested on the ad account and put them into one compilation. Some agencies call this a reaction reel, but I like to think of it as a hook reel. So anything that you think would do the best job of actually hooking that initial user, I just like to put all that content into one ad. And number six is an unboxing our product focus type of ad. So in all scenarios where we're developing creative strategies for our clients, especially the ones that we're sourcing user generated content for, we often like to make sure that we're trying lifestyle type of UGC. So that's the really traditional UGC where people are doing selfie style and they, their 
face and their body and their image is really the focal point of the ad as opposed to making the product more of the hero. It surprises me sometimes that there are really specific brands where more lifestyle, traditional UGC is what tends to work, whereas really product-focused UGC is what tends to do better in some cases, but it really depends on the brand. So that's something that we really like to try out because that's a really good finding for us. If we can see, oh, we actually see that your users and your customers are a lot more attracted to learning more about the product as opposed to learning more about the people interacting with the product, then that's something that we can iterate from and really build off of in the future of in terms of like what we're going to be developing next for that brand. Next up is actually one that I've talked about with you guys already before and I also think that I personally sort of ruined it a bit, which is the post-it note strategy ad. This also works really well just as a hook if you wanna try just like writing something out on a post-it or even on a piece of paper or even on a window or any like place where you can write on. I think it'd probably be really cool to like take a Sharpie and write on a wall. That could be a really interesting hook. But yeah, like people really do like seeing natural handwriting and it's something that is still a little unusual in our space. So this is definitely something that I have been trying out a lot more with brands and it just tends to work really well and for many of our clients it's been continuing to be top performers. So it's definitely something that I recommend you guys try. And number eight is what I like to call the TikTok response ad. Now this simply takes the TikTok response treatment bubble and puts it over top TikTok style content. So think something like more UGC in nature. Um, we've seen that this is actually actually been a super scalable ad strategy for many of our clients. And something that we also tend to do here is ruthlessly split test what we're actually putting inside of that bubble. Some things that I've learned about what tends to work best across the board are to really keep that tone casual. Like don't make it seem like it's from the brand. Make it seem like someone is actually doing a response to a TikTok in the comments section. Also be sure to use emojis and also try to play a little bit with the capitalization and the punctuation and really just think about how people are casually using that response section on TikTok. A good way to think about this is think about how people are asking you questions about your brand, whether it's through email, whether it's through a chat bot, whether it's on social media, and just take what they're asking and put it in these response bubbles. And number nine is the before and after ad. I actually have an entire video that's about how to make before and after ads that will not get disabled or rejected by Facebook or Meta. The key here is that you really can't use this type of thing to show weight loss or idealize cosmetic results. You can definitely still do this for beauty brands um, and for health and wellness brands, but you can't show like people losing weight essentially. However, this ad type, especially when presented in a split screen format is something that I see work again and again for many of our clients. And I would try doing this in a few different formats to see what really works for your brand. So you could try this just as a simple single image, or you could also test this as a video. Um, so when you're doing your testing of this particular strategy, I would focus on creating a few different iterations in different formats. And the final one is another type of ad that I've definitely discussed before on this channel, but again, it's something that we always, always test at Thesis, which is what we internally call the stepwise ad. Another popular way to look at this ad is called a three reasons why ad, but essentially what you're doing is you're boiling down your product or service into a series of steps, and you are literally using that prompt as the hook and intuitively when people start to see very quickly after that number one, number two, number three, they tend to watch longer and I find that this ad strategy actually tends to have some of the highest viewer retention rates. And I know I've talked about this a little bit on this channel, but if you have high hook rates and high hold rates, we often find that that correlates to higher conversion rates, AKA more return actually coming out of those ad units. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you learned something today or you liked this content or you're going to be trying out one of these ads, be sure to give me a like and subscribe because those small things really do help me out a lot as a creator and I haven't been feeling really well. That's why I was really low energy. So it would really brighten my day if you did one or both of those things. Thanks guys. See you next week. Bye.